Our Father and our God, we are thankful that you have brought all of us here in peace and in safety. We are thankful for the day that you have given us. We are thankful indeed, Lord of heaven, that we are alive. We may not have gotten home as yet, but we trust that you will take us to our destinations at the end of this evening's proceedings in peace and in safety. But we are thankful, Lord of heaven, for the moment that we are right here and now. We are thankful for the grace that you have bestowed upon us. And I pray that you will help us not to take the moments that we are here for granted and the moments that we are alive for granted. And so, Lord, we ask that the blessings of your Holy Spirit will be here with us, that you will be our teacher, that you will be our guide, that you will be our strength, that you will be our, our wisdom. Be with us now and lead us and guide us and make the things pertaining to your medical missionary work um, clear and the reasons uh, for our faith and the reasons for the high calling that you have given us as a people of God. Be with us now and bless us with your presence, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My name is Andre Knight. I am from the country of... I'm from a few different countries. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I've just been a medical missionary for a few years and I've been doing the work not talking about it mm. and so I can remember I was on a prayer line and um, you know one of the persons on the line was you know saying you know there are people a lot of people who, 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 who talk about being a medical missionary so if you do the work I've been doing the work uh, and that's different so my perspective of things has been forced to be balanced uh, because I recognize that we do not exist in a vacuum. Uh, we exist in reality. However, we can have notions about something that are quite unrealistic, and then we bind up the work of God to our unrealistic notions, and the work of God is then crippled, and then our influence is crippled. And this is why in Adventism um, and in the world today, we have so much different fanatical thoughts blowing about. Now, before I came here, Pastor Chapman relayed to me some questions that you have that you wanted to be answered. And so it is my desire to answer those questions this evening as much as I possibly could answer them on Sabbath as well and, uh, and get into some other stuff um, where demonstration is concerned. So I just want to repeat the questions that I have here. We're going to begin by answering... Um, a few this evening. Some of these I had already answered the last time that I was here, but I know that attendance wasn't perfect, and some people were not here, uh, many, and so repetition uh, deepens the impression. So there are 35 questions, uh, yes, 35 questions, which would be, was Jesus Christ a medical missionary? What is medical missionary work, and why is it important? Who can be a medical missionary? Is it limited only to doctors? Do I need credentials to be a medical missionary? How do I get started as a medical missionary? Where do I start? What do I read? Uh, what can I do tr daily to train myself as a medical missionary? Is it okay to charge for this work? What are the laws of health? Are the laws of health as important as the Ten Commandments? Why is trusting God one of the laws of health when worldly herbalists still apply remedies and, and these work well yet they know not the lord <laughs> that's your question <laughs> <laughs> is it necessary to eat the original diet uh, what about b12 deficiency how should we eat and drink how can we help others who may be heavy meat eaters to eat and drink healthfully should we eat fruits and vegetables together is it time to start eating fish and meats how can this be explained to new christians why does God call certain meats unclean? Who are they unclean for? Kindly explain Acts 10 and 1 Timothy 4.4 4 are not all animals cleansed and therefore fit for food. Can you explain Romans 14.3, 14, 14 and 20? Are not Adventist medical missionaries being judgmental when the text says there is nothing unclean of itself? Explain Matthew 15.11. 
Does or can eating unclean meat or eating meat affect our spirituality? How do you cleanse the body and blood from worms and parasites as a result of eating unclean meats? Since there are unclean meats, are there also unclean herbs, foods, or drink? Since the Bible forbids the use of unfermented drinks, why do doctors say it's healthy to have a glass of wine? On the issue of fermentation, is it safe to use apple cider vinegar, fermented soy products, or yogurt? Uh, question 24, why can't I simply believe and be healed of my condition or simply pray the sickness away? Uh, question 25, do we inherit the sinful tendencies of our parents as well as their diseases? Question 26, what's the best way to overcome sinful habits in all the people bound to their sins? And that, as a matter of fact, as we age, it becomes more difficult to overcome sin. So I found that to be a very powerful question. What is recommended for cleansing the blood and restoring the immune system when the person needing treatment is extremely poor? That's another powerful question because we've bought into the idea uh, we, have been, we, we have bought into a false narrative of health reform and natural remedies that causes us to think that in order for us to be healed, we have to reach for an exotic herb, or we have to go and spend a bunch of money, or we have to go and use the easy way out of just popping a, a pill. So we still have the conventional thinking attached to our methodology, I find. So there are things that we can do, um, uh, especially in the case of, of not using excessive amount of means to bring about healing. Question 28, how do you treat fatty liver condition? Question 29, how do you treat cataract without expensive surgeries? Mm -hmm. Question 30, what are the benefits of bentonite clay? Can this clay really cure leprosy? Question 31, what is cancer? What is a Question 32, what is a poultice? Question 33, how do you use figs as a poultice? Question 34, what is charcoal good for? Question 35, explain hydrotherapy. And so we're going to begin um, this evening by answering from one straight down as much as we possibly can, and then we're going to jump into um, the other stuff at a later date, um, namely on this Sabbath. So the first question is, was Jesus Christ a medical missionary? There's a very wonderful quotation. There's quite a few. Um, and the question is important, although it may seem obvious, uh, because I find that we have taken our standard, our pattern, uh, from the world and not from Christ. And so therefore all of our patterns come from Christ. And one thing about Christ um, that characterized Christ's life and ministry and also characterized the ministry of the disciples is this word. Can anybody guess the word that I'm about to write on the board? Balance. 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 Everything in creation is perfect. It is whole. It is a system. All right? It is a system. Everything is a system. It is completely whole. It is completely perfect. So water is perfect. Perfect. Balance all does not mean um, symmetry. Or equity in terms of that is not necessarily balance. All right, just like that is balance. That is water is balance, but it has two. It's two hydrogen and one oxygen. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is perfectly balanced in order for it to be water and life giving. And so, therefore, scientists are looking for water on other planets while people are starving on earth for clean drinking water so for me that's foolishness i'm spending billions of dollars on space programs while people are i'm dying daily for food so it shows that the parties of people on earth unfortunately are very out of sync with reality however this is a determining factor for our life balance and so therefore everything that christ did was completely balanced and as a medical missionary what we want to do is be balanced. May this be your prayer. May this be your earnest desire. Because without this balance, it cripples the work of God. It closes the door. Medical um, the health reform is no longer an entering wedge. It is something that people don't want nothing to do with. 
So is Christ uh, the great uh, medical missionary? Yes. And I'm going to read a three quotation stating this. In every sense of the word, Christ was a medical missionary. He came to this world to preach to the, the, to preach the gospel and to heal the sick. He came as a healer of the bodies as well as the souls of human beings. His message was that obedience to the laws of the kingdom of God would bring men and women health and prosperity. So this is Councils on Health 317, paragraph 4. So Christ is identified as a medical missionary, and so therefore he came to heal uh, mind, he came to heal body, and he came to heal spirit. All right? So he not only redeemed our spirit, he redeemed our body, he has redeemed our mind. He has redeemed the whole man. He's redeemed the whole being. And so therefore, this is balance. So as you look at medical missionary work, as you look at health reform from this point, we should be looking at it balanced. What you want is, this is very important to me, this word, whole. And this is why Christ asks, um, John 5, verse 6, he asks the, uh, the man, will thou be made half, part, will thou be made whole, because Christ made a whole man, a whole man, a whole individual, a whole being, therefore everything that Christ did has been designed to bring us back into wholeness, wholeness, oneness, unity with God, he came as a healer of the bodies as well as the souls of human beings, his message was that obedience to the laws of the kingdom of God would bring men and women health and prosperity. Not just health, but prosperity um, with it. This is um, Christian Service 133, paragraph 1. Christ, the great medical missionary, is our example. So, doctor, this person... The next person, the third person, I don't want to call on anybody, I, I am not trying to be um, antagonistic in any way, but Doctor, our favorite person that speaks on health is not our standard. Christ is. So we know who we like. I could call up some names that we all know, but it doesn't serve my purpose. Uh, Christ is our example. That is so important. You see, because Christ's attitude was not iconoclastic. Somebody Google that for me fast. Google it quickly. That word has special meaning to us as Seventh-day Adventists. So perhaps you may not have noticed the word being used in the great controversy. Hmm. All right. But you, you, you Google iconoclast. I-C-O-N-O-C-L-A-S-T. And you tell me what that word means. Breaking or destroying images, especially those set up for veneration. So Luther was very iconoclastic towards Rome. And that's when I, I, I first saw the word. Now, Christ went about having to do the very same thing, but he did not attack. He used a lot of tact. So while we are... Well, we are, um, what we like to boast, you have to cry loud, spear not, lift up your voice as a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob, their sins. And we delight in just going running in like Rambo and spraying the whole place and condemning every single and knocking down every idol. You see, when things are attached to people, when idols are attached to people, um, especially with their bodily and helpful practices with the, the notions or the belief system um, that they have or the logic that they're using to sustain particular practices. You're not going to win the battle by using an axe. You have to use tact. All right? So therefore, in approaching, delivering people from idolatry when it comes to their health, 
um, and other issues you have to use tact and you need to look at Christ as your example in how he used tact. So our example in medical missionary work, it comes from Christ. And so therefore Christ helps to keep us very balanced because everything that he does is geared to the whole man, the whole individual. Alright? Now, that is not to say you encourage people in wrongdoing, but you don't win every battle for a person's soul or for a person's health in one day or in one week. Alright? We don't do it. And they're not lost because they don't listen to you. They're not lost because they're not doing what you told them. Because if they are lost, you are lost too. Because what things are Christ telling us to do that we ain't doing? So the same mercy that God is giving me, mm. come on. Amen. Come on. So it's not, it's only, mercy is only for me and not anybody else? No. no. So, when it comes to medical missionary work, this is a ministry of healing. This is a ministry of balance. This is a ministry of Christ. You do not have to use the word Christ in order to present Christ. Because the world don't care about our profession on our lips. Is what we are doing. And I think I'd mentioned this before, you know, as I listened to the, 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 the story, Pilgrim's Progress with my children, one of the characters, and it said, it's not what we say we'll do, it's what we do we'll do. It's what, what we do. And so we want to show the world what is the spirit of Christ. Because all they're hearing is a noise. They're hearing the noise that we are speaking, but they're not seeing the spirit. So what we want to have is the attitude. What we want to have is the balance. These are what makes the impression. So he is our example. A call to medical evangelism, page 12, paragraph 1. True sympathy between man and his fellow men is to be the sign distinguishing those who love and fear God from those who are unmindful of his law. Oh, look at that. You know, one of the things that I always hear being thrown around, and I find it sickening, and why is it sickening to me? And I've heard medical missionaries say this, I've heard many Sunday Adventists say this, which is, you don't want to create healthy sinners. So because a person is not going to listen to my doctrinal point of view, that means I'm not going to help them. Oh, you go on with that foolishness. That's Christ. That's not Jesus. That, that, you can let, let, let that ship sail and don't dock in my harbor. So, Christ has sympathy. And his sympathy is not based on what the person is going to do in return. His sympathy is based because he's looking at the person as a human being. And the stage that he's meeting them at, they need help. All right? So the, the stage that we meet people at, and you use the same principle when it comes to evangelism. I might meet a person today, they may not care nothing for my religious beliefs, they could be quite antagonistic against me, but guess you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to help. That's all right, brother. I'm just doing this here for my conscience sake. Because I'm going to kneel down before God, and I like a sound sleep at night. I don't like tossing and turning, I want my conscience to be clear. I am going to help where I can help. So... Because, uh, you see, evangelism, and this is, this is, uh, evangelism, one person plants the seed, mm -hmm. the next person waters the seed, but you know, guess what happens? Who gives the increase? God gives the increase. God gives the increase. So because God gives the increase, I might meet this person at a stage in their experience where I simply plant the seed by my attitude, by my spirit of Christ, by the balanced nature that I approach things with. And they still are not interested. Somebody else comes along the way. This, is, this could be years between. This could be 20, 40, 50 years between. The time is in God's hand, not in mine. God is not in a rush. He, his purposes knows no haste or delay. Some person else might water the seed that they planted up. But God is who gives the increase. And then the fruit comes on the tree um, afterwards. So let me just play my role. Christ is full of sympathy. True sympathy between man and his fellow men 
is to be the sign distinguishing those who love and fear God from those who are unmindful of his law. How great the sympathy that Christ expressed in coming to this world to give his life a sacrifice for a dying world. His religion led to the doing of genuine medical missionary work. He was a healing power. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. He said, this is the test that the great author of truth used to distinguish between true religion and false. So Christ said he will have mercy and not sacrifice. How do we understand this? God will have mercy. You know, we were having a conversation today. Many people are trying to show God how righteous they really are by, by how, how they are doing these things that are so hard to do. And um, because it's not easy to do, it shows how righteous and how pious I really am. No. No. Christ is who gives me the, the, the ability um, to obey his word. I cannot obey in my own strength. And if I am thinking that my obedience is actually a sign that I am righteous, I am pure, I am clean, I am ruling the fact of grace out of the equation because it's God's grace that is helping me to do it. So therefore I can't glory in myself. This is why Paul said he can't glory. This is the test that the great author of truth used to distinguish between true religion and false. God wants his medical missionaries to act with the tenderness and compassion that Christ would show were he in our world. Let me read the book, Ministry of Healing. That brother, when he was on earth, he worked from sun up far into the night helping people. Many of those same people cried for his crucifixion. Mm. Mm. Isn't that sad? But see, it was for his character development and it was for his witness. And so, yes, therefore, we will help people who will be ungrateful, but you will gain an experience, you will gain a patience, you will learn from it. And it will be a blessing to you so that you can be a greater blessing to somebody else. Medical missionary work Amen. is about Christ. He is the example. Medical missionary work is not about new research that is coming out. Medical missionary work is not about the new superfood and the new super herb. It's not about the new silver bullet. It is about Christ. It is about the laws of health. And so it is about showing compassion. It is about restoring the image of God in man. Restoring the whole being. Making people whole again. So you're going to find that a lot of medical missionary work. If you're really doing it, you'll realize that you're going to be dealing with people's minds. More than anything else. Mm -hmm. Because you can do all the right stuff. I like to ask people, when you do everything that is right, you, you apply every herb, you apply every balm in Gilead, you apply every um, treatment, and it still don't work. What do you do? What do you do? You know, you know many times that have happened to me? Done everything in the book. It doesn't work. Because you realize that people's minds are locked. Mm -hmm. I have some spiritual issues to deal with that's preventing healing to come. So we, we have to look at things holistically so if we can get those green sunglasses off and see with Christ's um, vision uh, and look at things in a very balanced way, our understanding of how to apply the principles of health reform uh, becomes, becomes um, powerful because it is a tool that has been given us to win souls and we want to know how to use these tools um, to win souls to Christ and soul winning is not a day-to-day -day work. In other words, I can't labor for a soul today and expect it to be ready by tomorrow or next week. We, we may just be playing the role of planting seeds. So you need to know what God is using to do at the, the, the time. Now, I do believe that all of us know that medical missionary work is important. This is the second question. But I want to uh, read a quotation from Call to Medical Evangelism, page 7, paragraph 4. All of these questions and all of these answers I'm going to, uh, I'm currently just uh, put together. So I'm just laying it out properly so that you can be able to have a handout. That will be a few pages. And I also have some other handouts for you. Those will not be given um, today, obviously. But you will get them in um, due course, if not this Sabbath, um, by the next um, as well. This is called the Medical Evangelism, page 7, paragraph 4. Medical missionary work brings to humanity the gospel of release from suffering. 
That's powerful. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. What page? Seven, paragraph four. That's powerful. You want to know it's powerful? If you're getting surgery, you're going to take the painkiller? Or are you going to just grin and bear it? <laughs> I've got you. Because we've been taught to believe that you should have used them. So I see medical missionary work brings relief from suffering. Yeah. It does not plunge me into suffering to show I didn't use no painkiller, I'm righteous! <laughs> Yeah. So you're going surgery, you're going to use the people being killed. You better use it for such was it created for that purpose. For that purpose. So again, it's balance. It's when, it's why, and it is how. Mm -hmm. That's why actually I scoffed at it the first time I learned about it. I thought it was so disgusting. But as you grow, you mature. No, Melinda is known in the world as the best. They they are the most. Ah, no, Melinda um, Hospital. They apply drugs the most accurately. Best anesthesiologists, so on and so forth. Uh, they don't. They don't. They, they 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 are very accurate in however they apply. I scoffed at it. I still probably will scoff at it at some point in terms of. And there also are other methods that we can use, but you know, I always would tell people um, how did Dr. Kellogg, how was Dr. Kellogg able to perform surgeries? And he was the best. Mm -hmm. When he got that, 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 that Kellogg cut and that Kellogg stitch, when he stitched you back up, you can't, can't tell that you had surgery. And Sister White wrote of him saying, you know, we know the quotation where Christ was at his side um, in the operating theater, guiding his hands. Mm. But how did Dr. Keller get the patient under? Morphine. Morphine is right there. You know, I don't read the spirit of prophecy and leave out stuff. I read it holistically as it is because I have nothing to fear from it. And so why? So therefore, balance. So I know many medical missionaries that delight Somebody called me one time and asked me to just put together some quotations for someone that was suffering. And a particular medical missionary was telling them, no, they were suffering from cancer, I believe it was something or the other. They were under excruciating pain. They needed something to stop the sting of the pain because they're going down to their grave in bitter pain. And this medical missionary is telling them, no, if you use painkillers, you sin against God. And the whole family is bound, the person is bound, everybody's bound. Bondage. Damage control. So much damage control you have to do because we have imbalanced concepts of healing. It's not based on Christ. It's on self-righteousness to show how much pain we can endure for the master. To show how righteous we are. So, I put together the quotations and show, use it. Give the person a release from suffering. Because what was Christ's word? He relieved the suffering. He did not cause or create suffering. But boy, I meet so much people that like to administer suffering instead of that bomb in Gilead. Medical missionary work brings to humanity the gospel of release from suffering. It is the pioneer work of the gospel. It is the gospel practiced. The compassion of Christ revealed. That there is that word. We can't escape from it. Compassion. Why are there so much nonprofit organizations in America versus the rest of the world? Protestantism. Protestantism. That's why. Why is there a disposition in America to help everybody else? You understand? It's just it's the spirit of God. People have their other uh, financial um, agendas along with it. But America has been known to help people in need. And it is primarily because of Protestantism. It is the spirit of Christianity. And so... That spread has caught on. There are many other nonprofit organizations. Obviously, 
um, that are doing work who have no religious bearing whatsoever, but, the, but people have a spirit of compassion. That spirit of compassion is still present, uh, and that is a wonderful thing. And from my perspective, I mean, as bad and as terrible as America is, I just shake my head. Um, if you want to see bad come and live someplace else for a couple of uh, days or weeks or months or years, you will know what bad really is because it's just different. It's, it, it is just different. It is different. So, you see the word compassion come, coming back again. Of this work, there is great need and the world is open for it. God grant that the importance of medical missionary work shall be understood and that new fields may be immediately entered. This is paragraph 8, chapter page 8, paragraph 1 of the same book called The Medical Evangelism. True medical missionary work is of heavenly origin. It was not originated by any person who lives. So therefore, the pattern is Christ. 